The door I came through was a small town that didn't know anything about art. Our images of what art was were popular images of Saturday Evening Post and Norman Rockwell. And I came out of that hungry for something. So I'm preparing my, my portfolio, trying to get into an illustrator school, art center schools in Southern California. And probably it was one of the better schools in the country for illustrators, because I thought that's what art was. Well, I didn't get involved in that. I didn't get a chance to go to that school because of their racist policies. I threw away the idea of being an illustrator and decided that I was going to be a painter. At one point, my life, because of my social situation, as opposed to some of the other artists, was very different. When Los Angeles blew up in the, um, the Watts insurrection, there was a whole, a lot of violence and fire and smoke and, and people running the streets, getting shot and, and killed. I was more attracted to the reasons why that was going on and uh, why the city looked like it was almost going to burn down. And I realized that some of the answers for that required me to leave the art world. I'm like in, out in the streets and going, wow, this is far out. The streets were far more visually exciting than anything that was going on in any gallery, any museum. Visually, the destruction of a very large furniture store, uh, partially by fire, partially by looting, partially by just mad uh, teenagers that just wanted to break shit up because their environment had been breaking them up ever since they were born. At that point, I started reevaluating where I was at. I, I left the gallery, I left the art world. All this led to theater. I wanted to write a play that talked about um, this experience I was going through. And that led me to uh, help found a group, the Bodacious Bugarilla, a street theater group, talking about the social up and political upheaval that was going on in Los Angeles and actually across the country. The group was getting to be really popular uh, in the ghetto, particularly because that's where we committed only to show our stuff. So the group was really a knockout. People loved it. Uh, and, uh, but the FBI did not. And uh, we got some calls at one point, had various members of the group come in for questioning. There was a suspicion that various groups out of the black community, out of the brown community, all were going to kind of come together and challenge the system. And they, were, they seemed to be very frightened of that. It was just getting difficult for us to remain on the streets. Bodacious transformed itself into Bodacious TV Works. That ended up sending me uh, around the world, actually, because of various clients that Bodacious TV Works had. I found myself doing photojournalism. My experiences started to f define themselves as tracking various forms of heat. And I began to kind of piece together my own experience in this country by looking at some of the oppression and some of the response to oppression in other countries. That again helped me form kind of where I'm at and what I want to be and do. I ended up getting back in the studio, started to work again, but my work certainly because of my experiences had taken another turn. I was doing a lot of stuff relative to political questions. What guerrilla theater had taught me is most people can't take straight up uh, political criticism. It's gotta be funny. So I didn't have to object to that. I didn't mind putting together imagery that was a little sarcastic and I'm not as good at it as I'd like to be, but each piece I do allows me to get a little bit better. 
And that kind of brings us up to right here, right now. 